Hello everyone, it's Iris here with a layout for July using my wild hair kit. This one was comprised of mostly Project Life cards from the Project 52 Rad Edition and the chipboard as well as a few other things. And it is just a juicy, fun combination. So here I'm just going through picking out some cards that might work for this layout. I've been crushing really big on some layouts from a gal named Kathleen. I think her last name is Gromuler, and she goes by Scattered Confetti all over the interwebs. Some fabulous layouts, and I just love her style. It's very, it's very crisp and clean. So that's what I'm going to attempt to do with this kit here. And you've been seeing me move on to the 12 by 12 papers, just trying to get a feel for how the papers will interact with this photo I have. It is of my espresso machine, which is one of my prized possessions. And um, that's the story I'm gonna be telling. So, as I said, uh, scatter confetti. Her style is very clean, a lot of white space and a lot of white backgrounds. So that's what I'm going to start with. And here I am just auditioning which papers would kind of mat the photo best. Now I had seen one of her layouts in particular had this sort of loose grouping of a grid style. And so this is what I am going for here. I did really want to use a couple of specific items on this layout, one being that pa that little epoxy clip that's from Pink Fresh Studio and it has a little coffee cup. So that was definitely one of the ones I wanted. Here I'm pointing out a few of the other ones where I was just like, this, this needs to make it on the layout. I don't know if everything that I thought would make it on the layout gets there in the end. Um, You'll see me shuffle things around quite a bit here as I try to make my decisions, which I think is important to see when you're watching a process video. That's the whole point, right? Is to get a feel for how the thought process is. So I really loved this, this um, four by six card there that has the dashes and colors. I thought maybe that could mat my photo because the photo, has a very bright green. I wanted something very neutral behind it. In the end, I settled for getting a uh, a bit of this black with white on it right behind first because I felt that made the layout, pop, uh, the photo pop a lot better. So here I was just flipping it around to see which little slivers <laughs> would be showing. Um, I wanted to cut it so that those little dots at the end there were definitely like cut in half um, rather than just kind of stick out as all full dots because I knew one of the papers here I'm trying a few back and forth I knew one of the papers that I would actually use behind it would also have dots so I didn't want the dots of the black and white to really show as up as dots so I briefly considered another paper that was more of a mint uh, aqua is very pretty but I like how this uh, it's a pink fresh studio paper with the dots on a sort of a bluish gray here I like how it's very similar to the bluish gray of the stainless steel so I um, just like I said shuffling things around a bit I went off and cropped some of that paper. If it's 12 by 12, I really love just going to my uh, full size uh, Caterpillar Pro. So that's why I go and do that off camera. And here I was framing with my hands which part of this paper, the side that has the houses, I was gonna cut and I settled for in the corner. And then my initial thought was, why don't I have my layers? So it's gonna be kind of almost like a loose grid and layers. And I thought, well, what if the layers didn't exactly mat on top of each other? So here I cut a square of the grayish blue paper. And I thought as my layers built up, they could, here I'm also using that uh, square and rectangular pieces. They're just not, you know, they're just, I wanted sort of like a random look. And then this card here, uh, because it has the houses, and this is, has to do with my morning routine with coffee, I 
was considering that one. But then, like I said, there's this, it's a pink fresh studio, one of the sides of that, the black and white gray houses. I really liked how that could get me towards that clean look. So I'm keeping this fairly monochromatic. I bring back the card with the colorful houses, but I just feel like that's getting away from that clean, crisp look. Now this card comes back here with the dashes. It doesn't have too much color and I really want, I, I love color, but again, I, I moved that off to the side and I'm trying out combinations with somewhat, oh, I brought the houses back, the colorful houses back, but I'm trying mostly monochromatic combinations. So black, white, gray, the blue is a steely blue. Here's more gray. And then the pops of green because the background, uh, my that's my wall in my kitchen is green. So I think I'm finally to the point where I'm, I've zeroed in on the combination I want. So you saw me flash that mint one, but I'm basically clearing off some space on my desk. So you saw me, I recut that piece of paper with the, the blue with the dots because I wasn't feeling the squares and rectangles. It was very odd. So I'm gonna go for more rectangular mats. The one behind the photo is just, you know, it's a little longer and skinnier than the photo. And I mean, it's it's skinny. <laughs> it's it's a little bit bigger than three by four. Let's put it that way. And then this other piece here that is, I, I'm auditioning which green exactly I want. By the way, the green papers came from my stash. I've had them since 2009 or 2006, I believe. It was a pack, um, eight by eight papers. I settled for this one with the little, little dots there are little polka dots but it's a uh, tight spacing and I, I like that it echoed kind of the little dots on the paper next to it and then the the striped here black and white which originally I thought maybe I would frame around on you know all sides or two sides I'm actually only going to cut a little strip on the bottom to add interest this piece overall is smaller so the left grouping is smaller than the right grouping of so layered papers but they end up being rectangular almost the same size if that makes sense <laughs> and here I hadn't quite cut it exactly but you can see here so they're okay so the right hand side is a little bit bigger the left hand side is a little bit smaller in this grouping of papers each has like a layer three layers so now at this point I think let me start trying to figure out what I want to do with the embellishments. I went and grabbed some wax paper and picking some of the chipboard. That one says, you are fancy. I thought arrows would be good for here. So I could just point back towards the photo. Um, I really like this one that says currently loving and the right now. So here I am building up a grid and uh, I really zeroed in on that oh yes as as a title piece pretty quickly I like that it has it's also monochromatic it's just got like that um, aqua blue which stands out from the blue of the dog paper so now I'm thinking well where do I want each element was considering up there the oh yes up there and I really like that dash that dash card. Really, really wanted to make that one work. You'll see it's not gonna end up in the final layout, but I really love it. I'm gonna have to use it something else. Um, the little diamond. So that was a surprise for me. I really like the little diamonds in this kit. I'm not a really bling person, but I felt like this story was about something that was, um, you know, it's a kind of luxurious for me. It's making my own espresso with a fancy machine. It was quite expensive, but it saved me money in the long run. Um, so the diamond, I was I was looking at that, and then I thought, well, let me add some interest on the sides of the page since it is mainly a white background. So I'm auditioning some things on the sides. Doing my one of my favorite techniques is that fold over corner. 
I call it a peekaboo corner. And I thought, well, maybe I should bring in some more black in there. So again, a bit more shuffling until I I was trying to make the the diamond that card work as well. And but I wanted to keep the green and I wanted to keep the houses, you know? It was just kind of like sometimes you just have to try things out, right? That's what I'm doing here. So then I thought with this card, I could use some of the chipboard on the lines, almost like I'm filling in the lines with the chipboard. Then it felt too busy. You see that there on the left-hand side? It starts looking too busy. There I am tapping my fingers. <laughs> so how to make all the things I want to work on the page. And then I step away and I think, okay, I, I'm getting too busy. I wanted to have a cleaner page. So I went back to the house, the monochromatic house paper, and I thought, yes, that's going to work. And then I got this idea of like, well, I really love to bring this four by six card with the lines and make it a background. And that kind of built up that side and I like that a lot better because it adds interest, but it's still almost a white on white. It just has that little scallop on the side, brings in that another shade of green, and then I brought in this card with the stars, which is another shade of green. And I really love black and white with green and gray. So this is where I'm starting to feel like it's coming together as my vision. And then I put this card on the side there instead of a piece of paper at the top and I'm like oh yes this will work so I, I cut away because I was practicing over and over stamping with some new stamps I got from Studio Calico and this is what I settled on I brought in the the stamp set it's about coffee and that piece of paper that I cut with the the houses the black and white gray one I loved it, but it had a little bit of too much white space. So I went ahead with this color theory ink. It is in, it's called gray area. So it is a darker gray, but you can see here how I'm stamping off first and then stamping on my, my piece so that it is a lighter gray. And I'm just filling it in a little bit. I didn't want to overpower the actual paper, but I wanted to add a few more little details. And I thought the coffee stamp was a good idea. Then I also, as you can see on top, printed some journaling. And then I'll put that on the, the top, the, the little stars. That is also a Project Life card. So if right now, as you can see, I have that lined with the little citron green scallop. That's a Project Life card. The top one with the stars, that's the back side. There you go. You can see the front side of a Project Life card. So there's two so far. And then see how I condensed it down? I, I didn't make a grid of four. I've condensed this down into some kind of sloppy layers and it forms almost like a triangle. You see me, I did my hands almost like a triangle. So I like this, this configuration. I like that it's asymmetric. And now I'm gonna work on adding interest to the sides. So here I am using the Project Life card that has the little, the little diamonds to the little the corner here. And I like it peeking out like that. I think that's pretty fun. The paper I think would have been nice too, and it would have tied into the paper in the middle. But here's where I got this other idea is because I use that, that little smidgen of Project Life card with the diamonds up there. I thought, why don't I do some more peekaboos and rip I didn't rip the paper. I cut the paper and folded it over. How, how about I do some more peekaboos with more Project Life cards? And this is where I'm going to bring in more. My total is five Project Life cards on this layout. And man, that was kind of fun. That was fun. That was a fun kind of like aha moment. Like, why don't I just put more of these behind here? So that's how I'm adding interest to a white background. At least that's one of the ways I'm adding interest because I will be doing some splatters. So here I go. Here is the third area. I like to be asymmetric and 
um, you know, off centered. So I'm doing three, just trying to cut that away. I didn't want to tear it. I wanted it to be very clean still. So just did a little slit down the middle and fold over and I will be using my tiny attacher to attach those folds down. So I was looking at this, I was putting down my journaling and then the chipboard that I decided to keep. So here we have a title that says, oh yes, this is the best, you know, a big title and subtitle. And then, oh, here I had to, I had to, I had to move things over because I did add to the corners there. Now I felt like everything needed to shift over to the left because it was getting right side heavy. So that's what I did there. All right, so I have the, oh yes, this is the best as a title. The, oh, oh, that's right. Okay, so I started off with some staples that are full sized because they're black staples. And I thought, I think the black will work really nicely. And then I put them on here and here's where I pause. I'm like, oh, I don't like these at all. <laughs> I've really gotten used to the tiny, tiny attacher staples, you know, they're, they're much cuter. I felt like these were too big. So here I am undoing all that. So I cut out the part where I was removing the old staples and somehow I lost some footage. So I'm going to have to catch up on what I did. I went ahead and used the tiny attacher staples on those folded areas and you can still see little dots from where the bigger staples were, but I'm okay with that. I went and with my machine stitched around the rectangles, the three re main rectangles, and I also added splatters and the chipboard. I placed them in their final spaces. Now here what I'm showing you is I reprinted my journaling. I had it attached to a piece of uh, fairly thin cardstock to go through my printer, the Epson PM400. But here what I'm doing is, <laughs> you can totally not see what I'm doing. <laughs> um, I'm trying to show you that I have two types of vellum. And one is thinner and one is thicker. And you can see, oh, it doesn't capture it on the camera, I don't think. One was thicker, one's thinner. I decided to use the thinner vellum to do my journaling on so that more of the back, the card, the stars and the chartreuse color would show through. And I've been using vellum for my journaling more and more lately. I really like the translucency. I normally use Remington Noiseless, which is a typewriter font when I print my journaling, and a one and a half line spacing. So then I put it through my little Xyron sticker maker. I really love using that. Did you guys all catch the Scrap Gals podcast episode 215? I believe it aired June 29th and it's called Stick It, Stick It Real Good. I was on there talking with Tiffany and Tracy about adhesives and the Xyron definitely is still one of my faves. Great for vellum. So catch that podcast if you haven't checked it out yet. I realized, oh yeah, there's the clip that I wanted to use. So what I ended up having to do, I think I do it next, try to figure out where the clip's going to go because I went ahead and stitched around that rectangle. <laughs> so I'll end up just cutting a slit at the top and it worked out perfectly. But I did have to trim my journaling lines a little bit to go around there. And I, I purposefully am putting the journaling off the that rectangle. Just, I don't want everything to be exact. I, I really don't like the look of a, like a block of journaling text. I feel that that's very old school. So I purposefully put it off the actual background rectangle. Finally getting the last strip of journaling down. And then I realized that I needed to do this the slit to fit the the little epoxy clip in so that's what I do there now I'm checking this out and I feel like can I add a little more to something I really want the background to to have a little more so I tried a couple of pieces of chipboard and I felt like no that's just going to detract keep it simple 
This is something that I struggle with, but I do decide that I am going to fill in a few of the little blanks, I, what I feel are blanks, with some more of the splatter. So that was the Studio Calico in Inky Black. And I'm using big round brushes because I like how I can get big round splatters and little splatters much better than the end of the the little, uh, what's it called? The ink dispenser. So that's what I did. Thanks for watching, guys. I will put links down below to the two podcasts that I was on for the Scrap Gals recently. I'll put a link to Scatter Confetti. And uh, please subscribe if you haven't done so. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you got some ideas for Project Life Cards. I will see you here next time.